I'm Nate Leonard with the uh, Recycling Agricultural Plastics Program at Cornell and, and field coordinator for the uh, New York uh, effort of uh, recycling agricultural plastics, including the uh, dairy industry. Uh, it's an effort that started more than a decade ago, and it wasn't until approximately uh, 2009 when a burn ban was passed in New York uh, for plastics and other materials and a lot of plastics were uh, being disposed of improperly and of course large volumes of plastics are going in landfills. Uh, so the state of New York made the decision that it, it wanted to support a recycling effort because very few plastics used on farms are currently being recycled. Uh, it's been a, bit, a challenging project. It was funded through uh, New York State Department of Environmental Conservation uh, through um, the, environmental, the State Environmental Protection Fund. Uh, you know, prior to 2009, the estimates were that more than half the plastics were being burned uh, in, on farms. Uh, you know, it varies across the United States and probably other parts of the world as far as what sort of percentages at this point, I think we've dropped below 25% burning, but it still is, is significant. So anything we can do to offer better options for, uh, for recycling and uh, you know, protecting the environment and also protecting the soils where you know, people are tending to burn the, the plastics is, is a good thing. We're housed with the Cornell Waste Management Institute here at Cornell in Ithaca, New York. Uh, just for some perspective, the, the average New York dairy uh, is probably using about 10 pounds of plastics per mature cow annually. The group that we've that has been participating in this conference typically is larger farms. The larger farms tend to use uh, somewhat lesser amounts of plastic, you know, maybe six or eight pounds of plastic per cow. Uh, smaller dairies, you start getting into wrapped round bales and, and silage bags, and, and, and a lot of those farms are going to use relatively more plastic. A lot of the plastics we've been working on recycling have been film plastic, so the bunker covers, um, you know, silage bags, that sort of thing. Uh, it's estimated in New York that you know six million pounds uh, or, or more of uh, used agricultural plastics in um, in the dairy industry, and probably something on the order of seventy-five million pounds uh, nationally. It's not a huge percentage of the uh, waste stream when you look at the. Uh, you know, a given county solid waste, you know, when you look at residential and, and industrial, uh, but it is, uh, it's very visible and often uh, disposed of poorly, so it, it tends to be an issue in many areas. Uh, we can't argue the benefits of uh, increased use of film plastics. You look at uh, feed preservation, um, and it's dramatic, the payback's very large for farms. It's just that we need uh, improved options for recycling. A huge effort, uh, part of our program has been working with markets nationally and internationally to get companies interested in processing uh, you know, relatively dirty films that requires a little bit more specialized equipment. We've been uh, successful. We have several options even within New York State now. Uh, some of our plastics are being recycled uh, into uh, trash bags, which technically is fairly difficult to do. We also may not see this well, but we also have a company that's coming online in central New York, uh, Northbrook Farms, that's going to start a plastics uh, uh, lumber, and it's going to be four by eight, uh, three quarter inch sheets of uh, plastic plywood substitute for wet environments. We've also had uh, materials been getting made into plastic sidewalks, and that works uh, surprisingly well. Uh, right now we're looking at, with our program, we do have some mobile balers that we've put out in the field where we can uh, bale directly on farm with some of the uh, farms that generate larger amounts of plastic. We have several counties now that are coming up with uh, collection methods for bringing plastic into the recycling center or their transfer stations. Uh, which is ideal because we need to partner with the uh, local solid waste uh, people wherever we can. Right now we've partnered in the field a great deal with uh, local soil and water conservation districts. 
Uh, you can see a map here of New York, and, and the red areas are places where we have agricultural plastic recycling available. Uh, you can see there's very large areas of, of white where there's no significant recycling available today. You see an area that's in yellow, and that's an area where we have a, a fairly significant proposal for uh, collecting the plastics. Uh, the reason you see so much white on the map is, is there has to be a local partnership with with the solid waste and sometimes they are able to work with us and sometimes it's more difficult. Our, one of our largest dairy counties in New York, Western New York, Wyoming County, has been a huge success story. Uh, we're collecting approaching 50% of the used agricultural plastics in that area and getting them recycled at this point in time. So that's uh, very encouraging The farms are willing to participate. One of the key factors with willingness to participate is how easy it is for the farm. Uh, the plastics need to be relatively clean in terms of agricultural terms. Uh, and we have some best management practices. Um, the poster here, which you can't really see, is, is in regards to collecting bunker uh, silo plastic. And on the far side is a, a poster that's talking about uh, the on-farm collection of bale wrap. I'll focus on bunker cover for a moment and we try to encourage people to take small strips of plastic three or six feet maybe nine ten feet um, and not more than 30 35 feet long because you can take that piece of plastic you can shake it get most of the feet off and drop it on the usually a concrete uh, floor and then fold the plastic up into something that fits on a pallet, and that's something that's easy to handle for, uh, for recycling. The large sheets are very difficult, and if it's not part of the daily feed practice, uh, I mean, a lot of farms have shoved plastic aside, and it gets in the muck, and, and it gets driven on, and then it becomes much more difficult to handle and recycle. So it, we also put a lot of effort into um, the ease of recycling with the farms. Uh, there are uh, options across the country. Uh, part of when we were developing markets, uh, we saw some companies come online, like you know, some people that are taking plastics in, in California. There's in like uh, um, Arkansas, and you know, a variety of different places. The markets aren't lucrative, but usually we can get a you know a couple cents per pound uh, plus the trucking. Um, so it's you know pays for getting the material bailed and, and moved. That pretty much is you know what what I have to tell you about the New York program in a few minutes. Uh, we do uh, interact internationally. There's there's nice programs in Australia, New Zealand, uh, Europe, uh, Canada has some nice programs going as well for for recycling plastic. So it's we're pleased with that trend.